I think we're live. Welcome to this episode of Lifts. Mo, how are you doing today? Well, it's a toasty, what are we on Wednesday, right? Or Tuesday in DC. A summer's around the corner. I know you're used to good weather almost all year round, Matthew, but it, it's getting warm here in DC. So I'm feeling summer coming around. Well, it's it's episode twenty seven, and I was I was kind of thinking, well, we must have been doing one a week, so that's kind of almost halfway through the year we've been doing these. I didn't think we've been doing them that long. Well, no, we kicked them off in October, I believe, last year, and and I have to tell you, we didn't know what we were going to expect. I think we said we'll try six episodes and kind of see how that goes, but the feedback and reception has just been incredible. In fact, you know, we've both been traveling quite a bit. The last few weeks and i had just come back from a trip in new york and before that i was in germany and from just kind of walking around the conferences and meeting with clients i couldn't really believe the positive feedback and, and people were saying that this is a source of where they get news and opinion of what's going on within the industry and a lot of brands have actually asked us about you know are there ways and options for which they could partner can they come on as a guest can they showcase their brand. And, and, you know, we have not really brought on brands in that way. We've kind of talked about the most relevant stories, not really focused on product, but I know you and I have been talking about a few ways in which we could incorporate some brands that might want to be a part of what we're doing at Lyfts. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the first thing which would be nice to, to mention is, is that we are looking for people to, to join us. So I don't know whether you want to sort of mention a little bit about that, because I, I, I think you've had quite a few uh, people connecting you to see, you know, who can come on and, and, and what's involved in that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, we, we've had a lot of conversations. A lot of people have reached out to me in terms of, you know, whether they could come on and, and we could feature either a product or service or platform, whatever that may be. And, and after kind of talking back and forth and building some infrastructure around it, I think we're now set up in a way such as that we can leverage not only this platform, but a broader network to be able to really partner with brands that, that we truly believe in. So if you are a brand and, and you've been turning to speak to us, I mean, I've been saying, hey, just be patient as we kind of work through a few things on our end. We're ready uh, and we're open. And, and if you're a brand who hasn't spoken to us, by all means, reach out. We're happy to have you on as a potential guest. We don't have a guest here this week, but we're happy to have you on as a guest. We're happy to talk about a new product that you might be offering. So feel free to reach out to us. Um, LinkedIn is, is a great way. You can reach out on the Lyft's LinkedIn page or I think Matthew, I think they can also directly, if they're connected to us, directly message either one of us. Yeah, we've got a, we also got an email which we've set up and we'll put it in the link, but it's uh, marketing at escapefitness.com. So as Mo said, if you're, if you're interested in coming on as a guest, then it could be anybody, you know, we're not, we're not particular uh, anybody that's got some value to share um these these the, the reason people dial in and 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 tune in to, to watch these is because they're hopefully they, they go away and they'll get some value so if you've got some views on the industry if there's a particular story that you feel can be discussed then certainly send it over to us one of the unique things about this format some people listen on audio a lot of people watch watch the videos and the unique thing about this particularly in 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 our in in the b2b industry is is unless you go to an event or a conference it's it's very difficult difficult to have much of a conversation most media within this this part of the business tends to be in print and and, and there's some fantastic uh, publications out there but there's only so much that you can get over in print and i suppose if you think about the the media in in the consumer world you have print newspapers and magazines you have radio and you have television and and i think with technology allowing to to be able to now deliver radio and television specifically for the industry it means that we can have more of a conversation so certainly keen to to hear about you if you want to talk about anything whatsoever as, as Mo said, just, just send us your details. The other thing that might, might be worth mentioning is we are looking now for sponsors for the podcast. It, it does take a lot of, there's, there's a lot that goes into it, <laughs> even though it looks pretty straightforward. There's, a, there's quite a team that goes, goes together in pulling, the, um, pulling these together. So we're, we're looking to be able to continue this and, 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 and get it out to more people. So if you're, if, 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 if you're interested in getting in front of a, a high level professional audience in the commercial health fitness and wellness sector there uh, just just let us know it's it's a unique medium we've got the opportunity I've, well we'll give you should we give you an example more of what we can do 
let's do it. I know, Matthew, you had launched a new product this week. I was just checking it out. So why don't we kick this off with that new product? Yeah, we've got Escape are launching a product called the Gloop Box. It, it goes along with our family of British made soft goods. So we have, we've, well, the first product was our soft plyo box. Then we had a, our tire that are in many gyms around the world. And, and this is now an aff affordable alternative to an adjustable bench where you can do your Bulgarian split squats and you can do your glute bridges. And um, it's, it's just a very simple, nice designed product to do that. And, and we also link it in from a content perspective with our Mars screen. So if people want to know exactly how to use it, you can you can check out the videos on, on Mars. And, and, and this is similar to what we could do for a brand but but in, in addition you could come on to you know we could get you on onto the podcast we could have a conversation with you not necessarily specifically about the product but we, but we could get you on and, and able to to introduce you to our audience and and talk about some you know anything in particular that you want to get over that's difficult to get over in in a regular print format this is interesting because i do do some of this kind of movements and work and i typically have a bench here at home as you know as you know i predominantly work out at at home and i always find it hard to get the bar underneath me so i'm always trying to find ways to get my back up lift the bar up but this feels like a lot more comfortable options maybe we have to chat offline in terms of how how i can get one at my house here so i could do some of these movements but we have a lot to cover today so let's get right to it matthew yeah so the, the first story is is stage uh, th these are always you know these these type of situations are always quite sad and and there's there's probably a, a, a number of things that we could go in and and discuss it but whenever whenever a company whenever something like this happens to a company it, you know it's 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 very uh, yeah very disappointing and i could imagine very challenging for the people that are running the business to have to go through a, a, a situation I, th I think this has been on the cards for some times, but some some time, but it, it looks as though the the, the deal is sort of essentially being being wrapped up. Yes, yeah, Stages I think is a brand that a lot of people in, in the industry know. They've really taken over the indoor cycling space. Their roots were in cycling originally, and they've innovated a lot. They've were the first to come out with with the dual band parameter. They were the first to have a parameter just on the left crank, so you're able to get all the data just from a single crank. So which which ultimately lowered the cost of adding a power meter to your bike. They redesigned the inner cycling bike in a space that was previously kind of really owned by a couple of players, but they came up with a new product that people just love to ride. I mean, I remember when SoulCycle switched into these stages bikes, I believe around 2015, 2016. One, as a rider, it was a big change because I was used to this flywheel that had this leather band resistance. If you, those of you that, that don't know, in a spin bike, there's really two forms of adding resistance. One is you could turn the wheel to the right and you have this leather band that goes on top of the flywheel to slow it down and make it more harder. The other one is using magnets. So stages really, they were the first to do it, but they really made it popular where you bring magnets that then kind of go up and down. What that does that it creates one for a much smoother experience. And second, it's a lot more consistent. If you think about a leather band, that is inconsistent because it can wear over time but a magnet does not. So it made, you know, everyone kind of being able to ride consistently. They built a great indoor cycle performance product. But look, this is, as you mentioned, something that they've been struggling with for a while, really, I think, driven by the pandemic in a lot of ways. The pandemic was good and, and, and not so good for them. It was good in that it really drove up a significant demand for cycling, for outdoor cycling product, but it really depressed indoor cycling at, at the point. Some estimates say that stages was almost 80% of the revenue was the indoor cycling bike. So that went to zero. They then kind of had a mistimed launch with SoulCycle where the pandemic hit in March, Every you know, almost 70% of the SoulCycle riders bought a Peloton. And then when SoulCycle came up with their own bike in July, that was a couple of months too late. And so, you know, all those users had now had a Peloton. So that was an issue. And then they dealt with inventory. So they built up all this inventory that they were sitting on. And I think they were never able to get out of it. So unfortunately, as studios started opening back up again, they were just trying to get into, into a healthy cash position. The last thing on their mind was, hey, I want to upgrade, you know, all my equipment. So that unfortunately impacted stages. 
Now, we saw the rise of strength and some other modalities, but because Stages was purely focused on cycling, they didn't have anything else to really offer, right? They, they didn't have like all strength equipment or, or some other kind of product offering. So unfortunately, I think they just really ran out of options. And it, it is a sad thing to see. They've, they've had a terrific team. They've built a fantastic product. They're a pretty young company. I think they were founded in about 2009 or so. They were a very young company, but they kind of created an iconic brand in a lot of ways in a very in a very short period of time. Yeah, I, I would agree. I know I know Jim. Uh, we work with with Jim Leggett. Uh, I think he was I think he was the founder actually. And, yes. and some of the some of the team came from Nautilus, from from what I understand. And I agree with you. You know, they they coming in coming to the industry with a new brand and and almost going straight to the top and positioning it as the brand standard in such a competitive category. I, I think you got to take your hats off to them what, with, with what they achieve. I'm an outsider. I'm not a cycling enthusiast. So I, I, you know, I'm only speaking from the limited knowledge I've got, but certainly it's, it's very impressive. They're in with a lot of top brands, chose their bikes over everything else. Um, and they're also going up against some really big brands like, like core that have been in the space for a long time that probably had the leverage with the price points and the buyers and, and they, and they managed to continue to, to, to lead the way. So I, I, I think it, I think it's a, it's, it's disappointing. And I, I think one of the things that probably a lot of people don't appreciate unless they're actually in this business is the pandemic had a, a massive impact because what, 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 I believe, you know, many companies like ourselves and probably stages is you had this this bubble where a lot of people brought a lot of product and and so what what everybody did is they they went out and they they bought more product. So so now what you're doing is you're sort of over leveraging yourself um, with stock and your, your cash is out of the business. And then you see the correction and, and most people, we, we even had guys from Icon um, on the podcast where suddenly you're left with lots of inventory you no longer have cash in the bank. Your cash is in the warehouse with product, and then you have a shift in, in 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 trends. You know, the, the industry moves into a different direction. It picks up. Um, my guess, Peloton, the Peloton bubble probably didn't go in their favor because they also pushed thousands and hundreds of thousands of bikes into the market as well. And 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 I guess you know, had they, I, I understood they tried to to do some refinancing, and I think had they been able to probably refinance a business and this this is my guess but but keep things going for longer until that there's a leveling out of the of the marketplace i'm, I'm sure they would have been here but i for, for me it sounds like just a very very a, a number of very very difficult circumstances combined with the with the, with the struggle of being able to to fund that change to, to in, in in that sort of those you know in that in that extreme way and it, and it obviously sort of took them out i just think just very, very difficult for small companies um, like that, and, and I put ourselves in that category to to sort of deal with what happened over the over the last few years. No, it's tough, but look, I don't think this is the last we're going to be seeing of stages. Either the the name, the the executives they had, I mean, giant, their main manufacturer had already hired four of the key executives. This is not the end of it. So I do think we're going to see this brand continue on in some capacity, but it is unfortunate. And like I said, I, I wish the team. The best of luck, but there is like this past week, uh, Matthew. We've seen a lot of movement in the industry, and I added another story last minute. I know we did not prep for this in our pre-show preparations, <laughs> but I added Barry's Bootcamp. So Bloomberg reported this week that Barry's Bootcamp is exploring a sale at a valuation of about seven hundred million dollars. Now they explored the same valuation mm -hmm. pre-pandemic. They're expecting to get a higher valuation um, at this point. And I don't know the reason for why they're exploring it. M my guess would be that people want optionality. I think you and I see that in our respective businesses is people just don't want to do one thing. We recently saw Orange Theory Fitness close their merger with Anytime Fitness, um, which also has other boutique brands in here. We've, you know, but, but I think what I'm really kind of questioning is, is they're looking for an even higher valuation. So maybe they're approaching a billion. I'm not really sure, but is that valuation justified based off of their locations, especially when you look at comparable? How many locations do they have? What's what's the what's the? I, I believe it's about. It, I believe it's about a hundred, just over a hundred locations. So compare that to an Orange Theory that has nearly sixteen hundred locations internationally, to Burrs that has about a hundred locations. Solid Core maybe is a similar clientele and a similar comparable. So I'm not really sure how they've 
come up with that number if if this number is true. And again, if anyone has any any information on the valuation or anything else, please correct us and keep us posted on that. But I think you know partnerships. We've been talking about this. This might have been one of the themes for 2024 that when we did our predictions episode, we talked about partnerships and mergers and consolidation. This is going to be the theme, and we've already seen this happen so many times. We've talked about City Row and Water Row. We talked about Orange Story Fitness and Anytime Fitness. There is more to come, and I think if you know Barry's, if someone is interested in adding a very strong brand, a very strong kind of hit-based concept, they're a fantastic brand to pick up. I'm just not sure it's worth 700 million, but we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's I, I I I don't know either. I'm not I've not got the the details of that story. It, it does does seem it does seem high, but I, I guess with the right with the right partner, it, it is an extreme. It's probably one of the original boutique brands out there. I think I think before I even knew what boutique fitness was, I remember a guy in the gym asking me if he knew how to get hold of the distribution. He wanted to bring it into London, and at the time, I don't think they were interested in in doing that. So so yes, yeah, so I, I think it's certainly one of the earlier brands and there's there's definitely a lot of value in there. and I'm, I'm i'm the the timing is curious it, it, in some ways it's it's great that this is happening if you think about our conversation with anthony geisler he was very optimistic about the sector uh, you know maybe maybe things are turning around and we're we're you know there's there's a, another uh, you know a lot, a lot of lot of demand again for this and maybe maybe things will turn around we'll see i mean i'm actually as you're talking i'm trying to pull up the market cap of exponential fitness just for comparison so exponential fitness market cap is 615 million as of close of business today just from a comparison perspective so you know berries is a single brand with a fraction of the studios i'm not really sure what they might end up getting for that and the other thing i would add is too they really have an innovator so when you look at a lot of brands who embrace technology i mean matthew for instance you and i have been talking about the next iteration of of, of what this mars screen could be you look at Orange Theory Fitness replatforming, all you know, Lifetime, all these companies are innovating in technology. Barry's has kind of taken an untech approach, which is really good for their brand because their brand is really about no tech and a red room and feeling sexy and mirrors and, and great instructors and all of those things. But where's the innovation, right? And how do you prepare for the next generation of fitness ent enthusiasts who are now entering this space? I don't know if they're fully set up for that, and, and maybe that's why they're exploring some good strategic partners. Yeah, well, there's obviously some very smart people in that team that know what they're doing. From, from my perspective, I think this kind of leads on to the to the second story. Like just just looking at the space and what's happened over the last few years, you, you definitely the need for consolidation. Like the reason these people are coming together is is because i i think it's it's, it's very challenging to to operate some of these independently and compete so putting together big brands that like, like the orange theory and lift brands scenario i think that, that makes a lot of sense because they can continue to grow it and consolidate a lot of the sim it was lift brands that they consolidated with um, self-esteem brands so sorry Not lift, yes. <laughs> lift brands um snap yeah self-esteem brands snap yeah uh, anytime and uh, orange theory so so that makes sense because there's probably a lot of um from a franchise perspective there's a lot of similarities in in what they're doing um they can my guess one plus one equals equals three i i'm, I'm also thinking that that could be done uh, that we've, we've not seen it really too much but I'm, I'm i'm sure there's going to be a lot more consolidation on the equipment side because i i think there's just well, coming back from fibo there's so many companies out there that are doing strength machines and cardio machines and functional training and free weights that, that it, it, it's i almost walk around that place and think well how can all these companies survive um, just just knowing what's happening in the market it must be very very tough so I, I can certainly see some consolidation happening but but then it's also well, well what's next where where do you go next where do you look for growth? uh because although you know there, there is going to be organic growth it's not like you know that the, the, these brands are consolidating for a reason so so where do you look for other areas and certainly we've been talking about it a lot but but i i think if you look at the 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 equinox story which we can pull up i i think the, the reason i like that is because we're moving into we're moving into a, a different market with with different needs potentially different consumers we, we you know looking to maybe maybe get people into the, the space that probably wasn't there before and uh, i don't know whether you, you want to sort of touch on what you know about this uh, adding the the health lab 
uh, tests into into the um, offering. No, I think this is great. And and look, we, we're talking about innovation. We're talking about personalization. You need to see this from brands on the high value, low price uh, category, all the way to the premium like Equinox. Obviously the premium brands are gonna be leading the innovation in a lot of cases, not all the cases. So I love this move by Equinox. You look at their cohort, they are you're typically one that is looks for this high performance lifestyle and Equinox member uh, who I've been an Equinox member for over 10 years, you know, wants something that is gonna optimize, and, uh, optimize their health, optimize their work, optimize their family, all of it. How can a brand play a deeper role? So up until now, a lot of times, you know, people like us, we have our aura rings, we kind of try our own supplementation, we try to figure things out on our own, but we're individuals. And obviously we are very well networked individuals that are in the industry. But what if a gym as a whole comes in with a strategy to help their members and then trains their staff to support that strategy? So this partnership with Function Health will really enable an Equinox personal trainer or Equinox themselves to offer personalization by using biomarkers that are relevant for you. Now, this is a bit of high friction because you do have to give blood and, 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 and all the things related with that and the friction that comes with it, but it's a trend in the right direction. And I think when you look at the focus on wellness, the investment people are making in wellness, wellness is no longer like a niche term. It's really a term that everyone has to embrace, like we're all talking about AI, right? We have to think about wellness the same way. The journey doesn't start and then end when you sign up for your gym membership or when you start and end your class. It's kind of the beginning. It's the top of the iceberg. But what really happens below the waterline? And I'm really glad to see that fitness brands like Equinox are are starting to do that. I I The, the other thing that, you know, you, you, you've called it wellness. There's, there's, there's a number of different different descriptions and, and and products and services that go into this area. But I think a few of the things I'm spending time thinking about at the moment is the sort of over over 50s market, not just because that's that's the category I'm in. But there's there's this there's, um, you know, older demographic that are looking to live longer. And a lot of what you know, one, it's very, very underserviced because a, a lot of the concepts that are coming out tend to be more geared around a, a, a very much younger de demographic with, with slightly different exercise, different different sort of health goals, really. Um, and, I, and I think the over 50 is definitely a lot more underserved. I think that the type of products and things that they're looking for uh, is is definitely different. And, and Equinox and, and Lifetime are probably two of the brands that are definitely tapping into that but but also I, I had a conversation just yesterday um with someone who's involved in a, a very large um i guess sort of not not low cost probably up upper end of the low cost market and and there's definitely you know what they're seeing is is these these spaces that they were putting in their gyms these small recovery areas which were probably a you know a stuck in a corner a few hundred square feet now now these spaces are sort of at least 1500 to 2000 square feet where they're just putting in recovery and, and now that now the challenge is finding enough space to to, to put this in and, and what's happening is that they're they're actually taking the people on their let's say their 999 or 1999 membership and and people are paying more to have access to these areas which is your red light therapy cryo massage and and that type of stuff very, very much diy but for me, as a as an equipment company, certainly is is very very curious because if if that's really starting to happen already and it's a very new idea, you you know what is what 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 is your you know what what does a gym look like? Um, what does that mean for companies that are manufacturing equipment? Are, are they really addressing those needs, or do they need to look at other companies that they can acquire or consolidate or, or partner with to take advantage of that? Well, I think we have a. A small peak. So I pulled up another article here, which I posted the new gym in New York called Continuum, which I believe just had a pre-release last week. So this is a high end premium offering is $10,000 a month. <laughs> and you, you look at how much people and supposedly they're fully sold out and that and that there's a wait list. It's full, it's a gym with a heavy dose of wellness and recovery. That's a part of it. So Matt, I don't know if Escape right has, cool. has any equipment in here, but it's a premium location. I'm, I'm going to check it out the next time I'm in the city. But if you look at brands like this serving the top end of the market, and then you look at brands such as Crunch and, and Planet and some of these other ones that are offering or upselling rather the recovery spaces, clearly this is something that 
consumers want, right? Both on the premium end, like like we just kind of showcased here, but also on the value end. I don't want to call it low end because I, I know some very affluent people that also go to Planet Fitness as well, right? They just they just love the flexibility and, and the offering. They want a no frills kind of approach. So I think that's really driven by post the post pandemic consumer who is a lot more in tune with themselves, right? They understand that longevity in order to live healthier you movement is important you don't need to spend an hour on the treadmill and not lift any weights you need to spend time on the treadmill you need to do some strength you have to do some recovery and and you have to combine that with hydration and nutrition i mean even look at the growth of these stanley water bottles i mean <laughs> a couple of years ago they were viewed as something that our parents had. like they were they were such an old brand that all of a sudden found itself, and as people understood the importance of hydration, the impact that plastic water bottles and plastics in water have on your body. So just the consumer is getting smarter, and they're unlocking what they need to do in order to live healthier lives. And, and I agree the needs of someone in their 20s looking for a glute builder might not be what someone in their 50s potentially <laughs> wants to focus on. So I think you've got to serve these evolving markets it, what, what it does do it it's it i i see it as a very exciting time because i think up and certainly up until the pandemic to some extent it it, it certainly became fairly stagnant like you go to a lot of the trade shows and the innovation was fairly limited you know a few p, few features on existing products and i kind of sense that a lot of people uh, were scraping the barrel on on operator operator side and manufacturer's side and i'm talking in general there, there, there's always there's always exceptions but i, th I think there's a lot of scraping in the barrel and i think what's happened now is that there's you know in the the space that many of us are in and people who are listening to this now are, are really you know it's, it's a great opportunity because there are no there are no leaders yet that that have been established that have figured out how to do this uh, uh, first movers as we've just said here is equinox now they've, they've, every week every every couple of weeks they seem to be putting out a press release about something they're doing um within this this new space. Life, lifetime are, are clearly also looking at that whether it's the introduction of glp ones and and other types of therapies i think the the equipment manufacturer in a lot of cases are still still looking at very traditional product and and i think that the, the 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 financial performance of many of them probably reflects that lack of innovation but then if you look on, on that equinox article i think it came from athletech and at the bottom it talks about the egym health assessment which is which is pretty cool very innovative and i think certainly they're uh they're, they're an equipment brand that are leading the way to some extent then you have technogym that have also um is that is that right you mentioned somewhere i mentioned the tech yeah technogym unveiled their ai powered wellness kiosk ch checkup competing with egym's health span tracking system platform BioH. so so these two guys, uh, these two companies are definitely um, thinking about that I, I've, I've not seen it from anyone else yet but um and and you know whether they're the right solution or not who knows i think i think time will tell but but that's really my guess is 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 where you know where we need to be, where we need to be looking, thinking about, and I, I think it gives everybody a great opportunity because that that the playing field's kind of been leveled, and and there's nobody you would just instantly pick up the phone to say, hey, look, I need help with with designing this gym because it's a you've got to go to many many different companies and consultants at this stage. So consolidation on one side, yes, but on the other side, it's extremely fragmented. I, I agree. Look, when you think about brands that are going to be successful a lot of gym brands are really going to have, are struggling for identity. Who are you and how do you have that identity come through in your product offering, right? You know, look, I think about product all the time because that's <laughs> what our agency basically does. We're a product focused agency. But you, if you think about, you know, a grocery store and gyms in a lot of ways were thought of as a commodity, right? I, I have a membership. The membership gives me access to use the facility, gives me access to use you know, the equipment for, for, for a certain period of time. But that is now evolving. Consumers are coming in to a, to a gym looking for a lot more services. It's now, if you think about the evolution of grocery stores, right? You had your regular grocery stores that, that you and I went to as children, but now you've got Trader Joe's, you've got Aldi's, you've got Whole Foods, and then you've got all these regional chains that are such a good job. And if I were to ask you and say, hey, Matthew, in Orange County, name me five grocery stores and tell me what they do and what they offer. You'll be able to do that. With gyms, it's a little bit tougher to do that, but I think that's where gyms are going. So you look at a gym like Equinox and Lifetime or Crunch, that's what they need to do. 
And that's why you're seeing them really look at your different services and, and, and kind of seeing what works. Hmm. And, and grocery stores is an interesting one because like you probably know, Air One, um, you know, they seem to be expanding and the you know, prices of some of that stuff is, 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 is quite phenomenal. Like it's an amazing store to go into and, and you can eat, you know, I, I thought Whole Foods was, was bad, but you, you know, going into an Air One store is, is another level, but yeah, you, you should definitely check it out. But it's like, it's like Whole Foods um, premiumized really. It's, it's, There's a premium to the premium. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, they're, and they're doing, from all accounts, they're doing extremely well. I don't know whether, I know certainly around LA, um, I don't know if they're in any other places yet, but but that, you know, very much high end health from salad bars to nutrition to like, you, you name it, it's very, very similar to Whole Foods, a little bit smaller, um, not much, but a little bit smaller. Well, well Scott just, just yes. put in the chat that they have a $20 smoothie. I'd love to know what's in that. But <laughs> next time I'm visiting Matthew in the West Coast, I'm going to go check it out. But well, it looks like we're coming up on time. So I want to, you know, maybe close things off on a couple of key things. You know, right before we recorded this podcast, I actually joined Liz Clark and the Health and Fitness Association for like an update meeting. And they gave some really interesting statistics, which they're about to release in the report coming out in June. So they're releasing an industry data report like they do every year. So here's some, some highlights. In 2023, health club membership actually grew by 5.8%. There are now 78 million members in the United States that are now members of health clubs. The highest growth were in the Hispanics and African-American populations with 6.5% and 6.1%. Corporate clubs grew by 11.5%. And people are spending more time in their clubs. So the average days at gyms are growing nearly by 6% from to 79.3 days per year compared to 75 in 2022. And their goal is to have 30% of the population active and in gyms by 2030. So you're seeing the growth happen there. We're seeing a lot of movement with executives like our friend Garrett Marshall and his colleague leaving Exponential, Karina Kogan, CMO at PVOLV, leaving PVOLV into some other opportunities. You're seeing changes happening on the commercial Are they market. staying in the industry or, or going out, do you know? Y you know, I, I think, so Karina is going out of the industry. Garrett's staying in the industry. I'm not sure about his other colleague at, at, at Exponential, but I think what you're finding here is that there's movement, there's consolidation, some companies going out of business, some new companies coming in, some new services being offered. So this is, it's, it's not volatile, it's evolving. And it's evolving at a very fast pace. And as a business and to our audience, you need to be able to keep up, right? This is not a time to sit still. This is a time to be moving, going into your strategy, your worm, whatever that is. It's certainly what we're doing every week and trying to figure out how do you stay ahead? How do you stay relevant? And that needs to be really ingrained in every part of your company culture. Yeah. So have you got any any final thoughts, Mo? Or was that? Well, I think was that, that is my final that thought. I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off back <laughs> to you. Do you have any final thoughts for this week, Matt? We're still working on this on this wrap up. And, and, and the idea, just, just for anyone who's listening, is that Mo and I will kind of give our thoughts at the end of each each episode. And so Mo has, 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 has given his, and I was very slow to pick up on that. Uh, that was actually what he was doing. And now it's my turn. <laughs> now it's your turn. Yeah, I, I, um, I think I'd go along with it. Like change, you know, change. Some people like it, some people hate it. What, what I what I have learned is is change is gives a lot of opportunity. And when the market's fairly fixed and established, everybody's got their own place, and it's really really difficult to to dislodge a major player in any in any way. It's, it's not impossible, but it's, it's it's a lot harder. And I think when things like are going on, it you know, if if you if you really know who you are and what you're doing, um, you you can make a lot of progress very very quickly uh, the, the 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 tough thing is is being able to get a business aligned and, and really figure out what that space is that that you want to go after without having too many some right and left wrong turns but i i it, it is i do get excited when it's like this because i you know some some very exciting opportunities are out there to be had for the for the for the people that are paying attention. No, this is definitely an exciting time. And I'll be seeing a lot of people next week. The Health and Fitness Association is hosting their, I think, second Capitol Hill fly-in where they get to meet with Congress and a lot of representatives to, to push for the health and fitness agenda. So I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of people here in DC next week. Well, I think that's it, Mo. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up there. So th thanks for listening. Please if you've got any value, share it with at least one other person and either give us a thumbs up or leave us a few comments. And if you are interested in getting involved either as a guest or, or uh, potentially sponsoring 
the podcast, then let us know. And you can do that through marketing at Escape Fitness. And we'll leave the, the details in the links below. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm.